All right, thanks for joining me today. I've got a 1960 Smith Corona Sterling, and this is Laura with Jot and Tittle Typewriters. We're gonna see how this guy works, and um, I'll show you around and do a typing demo. Now, if you prefer to just get the top, top of the line, big picture, you can hop to the end of the video. But otherwise, let's dig right in and take a look at how this works. So this is the original color, it's beige, and um, it's an all manual, and these are really good typewriters. So right here is gonna be your paper holder. To set your margins, you're gonna press down, there's two metal tabs, press down and drag, and that way you just put it where you want. This is a paper guide and you can just use that. That helps put your paper in consistently in the same place every time. But you can bring it all the way in. Let's say you're doing something a little bit um, like a postcard or something and you want um, to keep your carriage somewhat centered. So you can use that to help guide in smaller paper. Now to set tabs, you just pop this back open and then back here, you're gonna see little tab, metal tab stops. And I'm gonna flip this up so you can see it. All right, so you'll see this metal bar with grooves in it. This is your tab bar. And these are your tab stops and you just pull them out. And you can call them a tab key or a tab stop, but you don't wanna lose these. There's three in here and then you just you know, decide where do I want my tab to be and you just find the groove and you just slide it on there. It's a little bit harder with this, me holding the typewriter up as well. And you just slide it on there. So that is how you do tabs. Okay, let's close this and I'm gonna set this down. Okay, now on the carriage itself to release, oops, sorry, the carriage, you just pull in the handle and move the carriage. And the handle is on either side, the metal handle. Um, on the left, no, this is the right side. That's your paper release. On the left side, this button right here, one where you see the one, two, three, that determines if you're going to advance one, two, or three lines. Now, um, this happened to me today, has never happened before, but somehow, um, let's say you get to your carriage and it's not advancing the uh, roller. Um, sometimes there's a metal piece right here that gets popped up. Um, if that happens, just double check and make sure that's down and it's engaging. You can see the, the little grooves. Make sure that's engaging. Um, and that's just an offhand comment. It's something that happened to me today. And so I thought I would share that with you all. <laughs> little nugget of information. Okay. Down here, you can barely see it, there's another metal tab. Pull that down, and what that does is it releases the roller, so it's free. So you can do um, fine-tune adjusting, and um, if you have lines or you want to put it in a very specific place, make sure you re-engage until it clicks again, okay? So you need, um, if you don't re-engage it, it's not going to advance properly. I'm gonna move the carriage to the left, pop open the top, and inside you'll see the escapement. This is called an escapement right here. Um, you'll see the ribbon, and it uses a universal ribbon, and these are easy to find replacement ribbons. You can go to our website at jotandtittletypewriters.com and find a variety of different replacement ribbons. Also, I have an up close image of the escapement, how it's threaded through so that when you do replace it, you can refer to that image to see how that is supposed to be threaded through. And remember, there's guide wires on the sides here as well. Um, this is a short ribbon, but it has a lot of ink in it. So you're going to need to reverse the direction of this. And you will reverse it dozens of times before you need to replace the ribbon. Um, and you do that on the left side. Just flip that lever down or up depending on what you need. And these little numbers here with this little lever here, that just determines how hard these strike your paper and then that changes how dark or light your font is. So you just adjust it to your likeness. Okay, let's go ahead and do our typing demo. So the paper, I'm gonna put right up against the guide and you just set it there. You don't need to shove it down, just set it there, turn the handle. 
and that pulls the paper through and make sure you pull this bar forward. Um, if you're not used to, you know, I grew up on typewriters, so um, some things we take for granted. So if you did this and your paper is going to be on the outside of the bar, that's not going to work. So you need to pull that bar forward and then put it down. I probably should do using a typewriter 101 video because we take for granted, um, those of us who are, you know, I'm 50, so I grew up with these. Um, at least I grew up with the Selectrics, that's for sure. Okay. This does not have a number one. There's nothing wrong with it. You just use the lowercase L. So this is a um, 1960. Miss Corona Sterling. So the margin, I'm going to move this margin out. There we go. I had it in too far. Let's try the red. Oop. Ah, backspace. When you make a mistake, there's no delete, so you just backspace. So I was pretty heavy handed on this. So I'm having to lighten my touch a little bit. Um, <coughs> it doesn't need such a heavy hand. Sometimes manuals, I really pounce pretty hard on them and they don't always need that. And so this is one that actually needs, doesn't need such a hard hand, even though I, I assumed it would. Not a creature was stirring, not, oh, there's the bell, even, uh, no. Okay, now let's go through each key and check it out. Um, this actually types pretty well. Whoops. So that one's a little sticky. I'll take, sticky keys are super easy to take care of. I have a video that shows you how. We'll give this another blast. Um, but sticky keys are, are common. I mean, that's just part of typewriters. So um, be sure to watch the sticky key video under typewriter tips because it's really easy to take care of. And um, if that happens to your typewriter, it's there's nothing wrong with your typewriter. Just welcome to the world of typewriters. And that's also why it's good to keep a cover on your typewriter, which we do now sell covers on our website um, because it keep every time... You know, just the dust and the grime in the air, when it gets inside of that escapement, that's what causes sticky keys, you know, dirt, particles, animal hair, you know, um, dead skin, whatever. But so it's always good to keep a dust cover over your typewriter. So this is, again, this is a manual, and um, I'm going to type a couple sentences again to get another feel. I like to decide, does it have enough of a flow that's good for, like, book writing? Um I um I can't see my hands very well. Oops. And that shouldn't make a difference. 
except that each typewriter keyboard is different and that's why I keep double hitting or hitting two or three at the same time is because I can't see where my fingers are at my hand. So this is, here's a good point. This actually, I think it would be good for book writing. It has a really nice feel to it. However, I have 10 year old hands because I'm all a five foot nothing and um, my hands are tiny. And so manual typewriters are challenging for me so this one is not isn't one that i would use because it's hard for my hands to reach and, and be able to press down hard enough so keep that in mind like for kids their hands are smaller this is not going to be good for them if you don't have tiny hands like i do then this would be a good um, option for you just keep in mind with manual typewriters you do have to press a little bit harder than a computer and you have to press down press down further so um that being said it is still excellent working typewriter great for book writing but if you're like me and you're petite with little kid hands um i do recommend something else that is better or if you don't mind typing with one finger then definitely would be fine for you as well okay Sorry to drag this on. Thanks so much for watching. You all have a blessed day.